I'm just a beginning student, uh, an ignoramus. I'm, I'm, you know, somewhat. At least I like Bomer. I try to listen to uh, certain great people's teachings, that people here in, in Eretz Israel, people in, in Yerushalayim who are experts at this field. And I think that uh, a person should at least begin some level of some level of, of connection because that's part of the totality of Torah to understand the tradition beyond the tradition. We'd love to share whatever uh, we have with as many people as we can. Shalom of Racha. One of the aspects which intrigues me about Lagba Omer is the very fact that Lagba Omer on some level is connected to the world of mysticism. And there's even something mystical about trying to study the origins of Lagba Omer. What exactly are we celebrating on Lagba Omer? There are several approaches, but I would like to discuss two of them. According to one school of thought, Lagba Omer represents the day of the cessation of the death of the students of Rabbi Akiva. Uh, you know, there were 24,000 students of Rabbi Akiva who passed away during this period. And Lagba Omer represents the end of that period and the beginning, I guess, of the world of consolation from the great tragedy of the death of Rabbi Akiva's students. And the other great event which is connected to Lagba Omer seems to be the day of the revelation of the Zohar, the greatest work of Jewish mystical tradition, connected to the day that Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai leaves this world and reveals the secrets of the Torah in the work called the Zohar. Why exactly did these 24,000 students perish? And the rabbis teach, They lacked a certain level of honor, of mutual honor to each other. On some level, and I, who am I to criticize? I'm just repeating what we read. They didn't show proper respect to each other. Now, there are many, many people in the world, not just hundreds, not thousands, not tens of thousands, not hundreds of thousands, not millions of people. Many people don't respect each other. Rabbi Akiva taught that more than any other principle of Torah, the most important principle is to show respect to each other. kamocha, And show honor, show love. You shall love your friend as much as you love yourself. Rabbi Akiva Omer. Zeklal Gadol Torah. Rabbi Akiva teaches that that's the most important principle of Torah. According to one school of thought, maybe more was demanded of the students of Rabbi Akiva precisely because they were students of this great rabbi. If you're studying under the tutelage of a great rabbi who's teaching you uh, that prayer is the most important concept and you don't pray, well, then you're missing the main message of your rabbi. And if you're studying under Rabbi Akiva, you're close students of Rabbi Akiva and he's telling you, that's the most all-encompassing teaching of Torah, that perhaps if they're showing a lack of regard to each other, then maybe more is, is expected of them. And perhaps that explains part of the tragedy of this tragic death of the 24,000 students. Rabbi Akiva was also the one who taught that when it says in the Torah, et Hashem tira, when the Torah uses an extra word speaking about certain levels of reverence for God, that this comes to include respecting not only God, but Torah sages as well. And therefore, maybe the students of Rabbi Akiva are on a special level of expected recognition in this great area, and if they faulted on any level, then more was expected of them. Lagba Omer then would represent the day where we have already internalized this message, and it's, of course, the great day of Nahagu Chavod Zebazeh. If this is the end of the period of Lo Nahagu Chavod, if this is the end of the period where they lack respect, then, of course, Lag Bomer, hopefully, is being observed, I hope, all over the world, and especially here in Eretz Israel, with the highest level of love and respect for each other. And the other great event that took place on Lag Bomer, according to one tradition, is the day of the revelation, the teaching of the Zohar by Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. Now, according to one understanding of mystical tradition, the Zohar teaches us that there's so much more to the Torah than meets the eye. On this great level of studying, on this day of Lagba Omer, what we understand is that the Torah is more than you read. 
It's more than you see. Because so many people say, well, can you show me in the text where it says that this is the message? You say, well, it's right there. Where is it? I don't see it. Of course you don't see it. Because you only read the black letters. But in, in the world of mysticism, there's something beyond the black letters of Torah. There's something called the white letters of Torah. Around each black letter, there's a white space. The technical explanation, of course, is if there wouldn't be any spaces, you wouldn't be able to read anything. The black letters would just run right into each other. But according to the world of Kabbalah, I'm not a Kabbalist, I'm just repeating. According to the world of Kabbalah, in those spaces around the black letters, somehow this indicates for us, this teaches us, that there's more to the text than meets the eye. There's so many people who can't relate to Torah. Torah doesn't mean anything to them, God forbid. You know, they read it, and they say, I, I don't know, this doesn't seem to be a very important work to me. I don't see the rev- relevance of this work to my, uh, my inner struggles. Maybe that's because they've only been reading the Torah on one level. Maybe Lag Baomer is the day where we go beyond the simple level of the Torah, beyond the level of, of Darush, beyond the level of Remez, and we go into the level of Sod. Maybe they're all looking for the secrets of Torah. Rav Cook once said that although in previous generations there were so many requirements before one could study mysticism, before one could study Zohar, he says in the, in the period of Mashiach, the period right before the redemption, the darkness will be so great that we'll have to shine our brightest lights. And he claimed that the brightest lights were the lights of the Zohar, the lights of mysticism. And so maybe that's what's being celebrated on this great day. And I was thinking that maybe if it's the day where Rabbi Akiva's students, uh, Baruch Hashem, we should never know of any kind of tragedy in any Jewish community. But if this was the day of the cessation of the death of the students of Rabbi Akiva because of the sin that we spoke of before, of lack of mutual honor, Maybe the way we could begin honoring each other is if we saw each other in the view of the Zohar. Maybe the way to read, to read people is also a Zoharic reading of people, of human beings. You see, when you see a text of Torah, all you see is the text. But there's more to the text, there's more to the message than you see. You know why people don't respect each other? Because when they see someone else, when they encounter another individual, they think, okay, I, I know who this person is. I see this person. I understand their totality. No, you don't. That's because you're not reading this person with the Zohar. There's so much more to them. There's such depth to them. There's a secret to every person. The Hebrew word for secret and the Hebrew word for stranger are identical words. Every person is a Zar and a Raz. Every new person that you meet, every individual, you think, stranger. There's nothing much to that person. Oh, yes, there is, because you have to start reading it with the Zoharic light of the mysticism, of the inner mystical light of every person. Lagba Omer is that day. We're out throughout Israel here. There are bonfires, there are Medurot all over. And so many people have tried to explain why exactly are there so many bonfires? What do they represent? Some say maybe it's one big yard site candle. Maybe they're lighting some kind of memorial light in memory of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. Or maybe it's a, an inner quest of the, of the community at large to shine that great light the light of Torah, for all of those people who don't yet see the light of Torah, for all those people who don't see any great shining light in the the tradition. Maybe we're praying together that they should be able to see the light as bright as the Midurah, as light as the uh, bonfire, and maybe to shine the light of each individual. Maybe this is the day where no longer will we lack regard for each other, no matter who who the other person is. May we see the great inner light of that other individual. And as we observe Lag Baomer, each person in his or her own way, as you go to view those bonfires and that great light, realize that there's a great light in the person down the block. There's a great light in your employer, in your employee, in your colleague, in your friend. And see that inner light and may it shine forever. I hope that we can internalize the messages of Lag Baomer. And I hope that each of us can show greater love, respect, regard for every other individual. And may we show greater love and respect and regard for every word of Torah as we study the inner light that's shining, especially on Lak Vomer. Thank you so much for listening. Shalom. I surely think that on, on some level, there's this wave of interest in mysticism in this generation. And I really do feel that when some people read the Torah and they use words like, I'm bored, it's insignificant to me. You know, I, I read through the Torah. Then maybe what they're lacking is a certain kind of inner light that has to shine for them in their study. And I would recommend that each person try to find the proper teacher because there are people who speak in the name of 
mysticism who are not necessarily uh, teaching the, the truths of our, of our tradition. But if a person can find a genuine teacher, a genuine uh, Rav, a Rebbe, to study with them, I think very often this can open up new areas of understanding and make the Torah, which seems so technical and so detailed, just bring it all alive to a, to a higher level of, uh, of understanding.